One of the things about EMDR, which is perhaps the most novel part for most individuals, is the uh, BLS or bilateral stimulation. Therapeutically, we have those two elements. We have a dual attention, one foot in the trauma past, one foot in the present with the therapist now. That's common to uh, many different therapeutic modalities, but the bilateral stimulation or BLS is different. BLS for a long time made EMDR very controversial, for some it remains so. However, the studies that deconstructed EMDR to look at its effectiveness began to look at BLS in more detail. I want to give you a few um, broad brush rules of thumb around BLS and why it's important. Firstly, we know now from the research that BLS is not simply um, some sort of pixie dust that we add to our therapeutic process to dress it up. It is causing meaningful, measurable and demonstrable change within the central nervous system. And this can be measured and has been shown in a number of different studies now. BLS can be thought of as, in a very broad sense, being pro-parasympathetic. That if we did nothing else except BLS with you as an individual, that all of the metrics that we could normally measure to show some degree of a relaxation effect, such as galvanic skin response, uh, heart rate variability, and blood pressure, that all of these things would show a relaxation effect from somebody doing BLS with you. But it's much richer than that. The Dutch have very much leaned into the effects of BLS as being involved in taxing working memory. Whenever we do BLS for a minimum of 25 seconds, it's been demonstrated that that is sufficient to tax working memory. Why is that important? Well, EMDR, although we have the eight phase three prompt protocol with the procedural steps, the reality is we're only doing three things within phases three to seven the reprocessing phases. What we're effectively doing is we identify and activate a memory network that that then makes that memory network vulnerable to change. We change it and then we stabilize it again. And so information once activated, if we can tax working memory, it makes it hard for the brain to hold on to that information and reconsolidate all of it. Therefore, some of it is lost and what we see after BLS is that the studies show that we see a reduction in the vividness of a trauma memory and we see a reduction in the emotionality. So BLS, within taxing working memory theory, we see that it's doing those two things. The taxing working memory is a very, very important theory, I think, and it's really useful and I find it very helpful as a clinician. However, I don't believe it's the full picture. If we look at some studies which have uh, taking a look at the neurobiology in a bit more detail, that one of the things that shows up is there is a system or a function within the central nervous system and the nervous system in general, which I believe can partly explain how the brain is working within the BLS effects upon the brain. And that's a phenomenon we call stochastic resonance, or we can simply think of that as helpful randomness. Now, stochastic resonance um, within the brain. Let's look at it this way. Jim Knight gave me the example of a coffee shop. If you and I wanted to discuss something really private in a coffee shop, then imagine if everybody in this coffee shop is sitting in silence. This is like the brain and trauma. Some of the normal background noise is missing in the traumatized brain. And this is a signal which is normally coming from the cortex to the thalamus. Well, we wouldn't feel very comfortable talking because I think everybody's sitting around me listening to me or about to hear what I'm going to say because they're not having their own conversation. So it would inhibit what we're going to or would be willing to talk about. Now, let's imagine a normal coffee shop. Everybody's talking. There's maybe music in the background. That helpful background random noise means I'm no longer worried. So I feel more comfortable to communicate. So I'm going to talk to you about this private conversation that I want to mention. But the other thing that it helps is because I'm deaf, it means I have to focus on you more intently because I have to pay attention to you because there is this background noise that could potentially distract me. And indeed, that's exactly what the BLS is doing, that we see from the research that it 
improves communication and also focus. And so when BLS is being used as a part of the procedural steps of ENDR, we're getting both of those things. It's facilitating communication within the brain, it's improving focus, it's increasing a relaxation effect, and it's also decreasing vividness and emotionality, all things which you will recognize are important within the procedural steps.